Hi, I'm Ingrid Whitaker. Greetings from South Padre Island, Texas, and the Week 7 recap of Ethan and Ingrid's 48-state big year. We began Week 7 looking for the exotics of Miami, Florida. No, not that kind of exotics. Rather, species from Asia and South America that were brought into Southern Florida as pets. These birds escaped or were released and over time established their own breeding colonies. Once these colonies have existed for a number of generations, they become countable in a big year. When it comes to raptors, sparrows, or warblers, Ethan and I have lots of experience locating and identifying species. But moving around one of America's largest cities and finding unfamiliar birds was a bit overwhelming. So we hired David Simpson, a well-known Florida birder and naturalist, as our guide. And for nine hours, we moved from neighborhood to neighborhood, finding parakeets at one stop, macaws at another. While we were thrilled to find so many parakeets in Miami, we missed a key one, the Nanday parakeet. Fortunately, we found a hot spot for them on our way north, in Sarasota at the celery fields. When we first approached the birding blind, the parakeets were not there, but they soon announced themselves as they came in to feed. Parakeets are chatterboxes, much like certain students in my classes over the years. Wednesday, February 14th was notable, not only because it was Valentine's Day, but also because it yielded zero new birds for us. As we made our way through Alabama, Mississippi, and Eastern Louisiana, there were no birds to chase along our route. Ethan tried very hard to turn every rust area bird into a new one, but those ubiquitous yellow rumped warblers we've seen in high numbers in every state we've been in simply refused to cooperate. Determined to change the situation, Ethan found a hot spot along the next day's route at a landfill area in Louisiana. It did not disappoint as we picked up four new birds for the year. You might be surprised to know how many birds can be found at landfills and water treatment plants. Later in the day, it was time for a rest stop and lunch. Checking the nearby sightings, I noticed several from Anahuac National Wildlife Refuge. Ethan and I first visited this wonderfully birdie wildlife drive in April 2017. A bit of a detour, but we couldn't pass it up. Here, the birds helped us pump up our year count by three birds, the most exciting of which came at the end, a majestic and very accommodating white-tailed kite. Leaving Victoria, Texas on Thursday morning, we were excited to try our luck on a tip we got from good birding friend Eddie Edwards. Eddie had observed 20 whooping cranes the day before in a field just north of Corpus Christi. They were there, just as Eddie had promised. We also enjoyed more views of sandhill cranes as there were several of them there as well. Next, we headed into Corpus Christi, home of the off-course cattle tyrant. This cattle tyrant should be in South America following cattle around in a flock of its kind. But this particular bird missed that memo and has been hanging around a busy intersection since November, enjoying the insects provided by dumpsters in the parking lots of nearby restaurants. We have had our fingers crossed for weeks that this bird would still be here when we finally arrived in Texas, and we were thrilled that he stuck around for us. Saturday, our birding luck took a turn for the worse as Mother Nature decided to send the lower Rio Grande River Valley, a nasty front of rain and wind. We were out chasing birds anyway, especially the many rarities to be found in Brownsville. But despite our best efforts, we could not find these birds who were likely hunkering down to ride out the storm. Cold and soaked to the skin, we decided to call it quits for the day, head home for some hot cocoa and start again tomorrow. All was not lost though, we did pick up eight new birds for the year. This is a map of where each of our first year birds was seen so far. We hope you will follow our journey at bigyearbirding.com. Happy birding.